Welcome to our video about one of the world's most iconic and important transport systems, the London Underground. Today, we'll explore its fascinating history, from its construction to its current operation, understand its structure, lines and trains, and discuss its vital role in urban transport. Stay until the end to learn more about the challenges and future plans of this centuries-old system that moves millions of people every day. History of Construction Construction of the London Underground, the world's first underground transport system, began in the mid-19th century. The idea was conceived as a solution to the city's growing congestion. The first line, the Metropolitan Railway, opened on the 10th of January 1863, linking Paddington and Farringdon stations. Initially, the trains were powered by steam, which made the tunnels stuffy and smoky. However, this technology represented a huge advance for its time and quickly proved popular with passengers. Over the following decades, the system continued to expand with the construction of new lines and the incorporation of independent railway companies. In 1890, a major milestone was the introduction of electric trains with the opening of the City and South London Railway, now part of the Northern Line. This advancement allowed the construction of deeper tunnels, known as Deep Level, which are one of the most recognizable elements of the modern system. During the early 20th century, the different lines began to be unified under the management of the Underground Electric Railways Company of London, UERL, led by Charles Yerkes. This unification process, together with the electrification of existing lines, consolidated the tube network as we know it today. During the Second World War, the tube played a vital role in providing shelter for thousands of Londoners during the aerial bombings, known as the Blitz. Stations were adapted to accommodate people, providing a measure of safety at a time of great danger. After the war, the system continued to grow, with new sections being added and modernizations being carried out to improve efficiency and safety. Lines such as the Victoria Line, which opened in 1968, and the Jubilee Line in 1979 introduced technological innovations and extended the reach of underground transport. The history of the London Underground is a tale of continuous innovation, always seeking to meet the growing demands of an ever-expanding city. Length and Lines The London Underground is one of the largest and most complex underground transport networks in the world. The system currently has 11 main lines covering a length of approximately 402 kilometers of track, connecting central London with suburban areas and neighboring cities. Each line is represented by a specific color on the tube map, making it easy for passengers to navigate. The best known lines include the central line, red, which stretches for over 74 kilometers and is the longest in the entire system. The Jubilee line, gray, opened in 1979 which connects the city center to important areas such as Canary Wharf, and the Piccadilly Line, dark blue, which is one of the main routes for passengers traveling between Heathrow Airport and central London. Other notable lines include the Victoria Line, light blue, the first fully automated line when it opened in 1968, and the Northern Line, black, which covers a large area north and south of the Thames. The District Line, green, and Circle Line, yellow, operate largely in central London, providing convenient connections between the city's main tourist attractions and shopping areas. The system is divided into fare zones ranging from one to nine, with zone one being the most central. This makes it easier to determine ticket fares and allows passengers to plan their journeys according to distance. In addition, the underground serves 272 stations with King's Cross Saint. Pancras being one of the busiest, with over 97 million passengers per year. This station serves as a major transport hub, connecting several underground lines, long-distance rail services, and the Eurostar, which connects to continental Europe. Over the years, line expansion has been a priority to meet the growing demand of London's population, which continues to grow. Recent extensions, such as the opening of the Northern Line extension to Battersea Power Station in 2021, and the opening of the Elizabeth Line in 2022 demonstrate the city's commitment to keeping its transport system up to date and efficient. With over 5 million passengers using the underground every weekday, the London Underground Network continues to play a vital role in keeping the city running.
trains and infrastructure. The London Underground has an impressive infrastructure, consisting of different types of trains adapted to the needs of the various lines. There are two main types of lines, subsurface with wider, shallower tunnels and deep level, whose tunnels are deeper and narrower. These differences directly influence the size and design of the trains used on each line. Deep level lines, such as the Central Line and Piccadilly Line, use smaller trains adapted to the limited space of the older underground tunnels. These trains, usually with six to seven cars, have a compact and aerodynamic configuration, ideal for traveling through the narrow curved tunnels. On the other hand, subsurface lines, such as the District Line and the Metropolitan Line, use wider trains with up to eight cars, similar to conventional surface trains. This allows for a greater passenger capacity, ideal for the more populated areas of the city. London Underground trains are powered by a third and fourth rail electric system, which provides 630 volts of direct current. This configuration, common in underground systems around the world, was introduced in the 19th century and has been modernized over the years to ensure efficient and safe passenger transport. The average speed of the trains is approximately 33 kilometers per hour. Although on longer and more direct stretches, the trains can reach speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. In terms of modernization, many lines, such as the Victoria Line and the Jubilee Line, now use fully automated trains without the need for drivers, while other older lines, such as the Baker Loo Line, still operate manually driven trains. The introduction of new automated trains such as the S7 and S8 models on the subsurface lines has increased efficiency and frequency of journeys. Each train has a capacity of between 800 and 1,200 passengers, depending on the line and the configuration of the cars. However, the system faces a constant challenge of overcrowding, especially during peak hours. To mitigate this problem, measures such as the introduction of new trains with greater capacity and improvements to station infrastructure have been implemented. The trains do not have exclusive carriages for women, and the system is fully integrated with all carriages accessible to all passengers. In addition, there is a growing concern to adapt stations and trains for people with disabilities, with the installation of elevators, ramps, and spaces reserved for wheelchair users. Demand and Operation the London Underground is one of the busiest public transport systems in the world. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the system served over 5 million passengers per working day, with an annual total of around 1.4 billion passengers. The high demand is driven by the need to move millions of people who live and work in and around the city. London, with over 9 million inhabitants, relies heavily on the underground to ensure efficient mobility for its residents and visitors. The London Underground service operates on a very comprehensive basis. Most lines operate from 5 a.m. until around midnight. At weekends, some key lines, such as the Victoria Line, the Jubilee Line, and parts of the Northern Line, offer a 24-hour service known as the Night Tube. This is especially important for a city with a vibrant nightlife and many workers working late hours. The introduction of the Night Service was a direct response to passenger needs and help to reduce pressure on other transport services during Friday and Saturday nights. The underground operates efficiently, with trains arriving at stations at short intervals, especially on the busiest lines such as the Central Line, where trains can run every one to two minutes at peak times. However, with increasing passenger numbers, especially at peak times, the system faces challenges from overcrowding, which is particularly affecting the Central Line. In terms of safety, the system is known for its reliability, there are a number of safety measures in place at stations and trains, including CCTV, emergency alarms, and a high staffing level, especially at larger stations. In recent years, there has also been an emphasis on improving safety for women and other vulnerable passengers with awareness campaigns and increased police presence. Importantly, unlike some systems around the world, the London Underground does not have dedicated carriages for women. All carriages are mixed use, and the system is integrated in a way that caters for all passengers equally. Focusing on inclusion and safety for all is a priority for Transport for London, the body responsible for operating the underground. Prices and tickets. 
The London Underground's fare system is based on fare zones that divide the city and its surrounding areas into nine concentric areas. Zone 1 covers central London, while Zone 9 includes areas further afield, such as the suburbs and some nearby towns. The price of a journey varies according to the number of zones traveled, with journeys within Zone 1 being the most expensive. One of the most convenient ways to pay for transport on the underground is with the Oyster Card, a rechargeable electronic card that offers lower fares compared to individual paper tickets. The Oyster Card can be used not only on the underground, but also on buses, commuter trains, the DLR, Docklands Light Railway, and even the famous London Tram. The introduction of contactless payment with debit and credit cards, as well as smartphones and smartwatches, has made the process even easier, offering the same reduced fares as the Oyster. This modern payment method is widely accepted and has become the preferred option for many passengers, both locals and tourists. In terms of prices, a single journey within Zone 1 costs £2.80 with Oyster or contactless payment. For those traveling between more distant zones, the price increases according to the distance traveled. There is also a daily limit, called a daily cap, which prevents users from paying more than a certain maximum amount per day, regardless of the number of journeys made. For zones 1 and 2, for example, the daily cap is £7.70, ensuring savings for those making several journeys in the same day. Another option available to passengers is the travel card, a ticket that offers unlimited travel within a certain number of zones for a fixed period, such as a day, a week, or even a year. The travel card is especially popular with tourists and residents who need to make several journeys in a short space of time. For tourists, there is also the Visitor Oyster Card, which can be purchased before arriving in London and offers additional benefits, such as discounts at tourist attractions. In addition, there are special fares for children, students, and senior citizens. Children under 11 travel for free when accompanied by an adult, while young people aged 11 to 15 enjoy reduced fares. Students and senior citizens can also apply for discounted Oyster cards, further reducing the cost of their travel. Expansions and the future. The London Underground is an ever-evolving system, with expansion and modernization projects underway to meet the city's growing demand. One of the most recent milestones was the opening of the Elizabeth Line in 2022. This high-capacity line runs east to west across London, connecting Reading and Heathrow in the west to Shenfield and Abbey Wood in the east, creating a vital route to relieve the busiest city centre lines. The Elizabeth Line, which has taken many years to complete, is one of the city's most ambitious infrastructure projects, spanning around 100 kilometers and featuring 41 stations. Another major expansion was the extension of the Northern Line, which opened in 2021, which now links Kennington to Battersea Power Station via Nine Elms. This project is part of a drive to revitalize the area around Battersea and provide better connections to new developments in London. In addition, there are already plans for future extensions, such as the potential extension of the Bakerloo Line to the south, connecting to new residential areas. In terms of modernization, one of the biggest challenges facing the London Underground is the renewal of its older infrastructure. Some of the lines and stations were built over 100 years ago, meaning that constant improvements are needed to ensure safety and efficiency. Replacing old trains with new, faster, automated models, such as those already operating on the Victoria Line and Jubilee Line, is an important part of this process. These new trains not only increase capacity, but also allow for shorter intervals between services, helping to reduce overcrowding at peak times. In addition to technological improvements, accessibility has also been a focus of recent expansions. The aim is to make more and more stations fully accessible, with the installation of lifts and ramps for people with reduced mobility. Today, around a third of stations already have step-free access, and the number continues to grow. The future of the London Underground is also aligned with the city's sustainability agenda. The system has invested in ways to reduce its environmental impact, such as using renewable energy to power trains and stations, and initiatives to make operations more energy efficient. London's goal is to become a carbon-neutral city by 2050, and the Underground plays a crucial role in this goal. The London Underground is more than just a means of transport. 
It's a symbol of the city and its capacity for innovation. With over 150 years of history, it has evolved from a simple steam train system to one of the most modern and extensive underground systems in the world. As the city grows and urban transport challenges increase, the London Underground will continue to expand and modernize, ensuring that millions of passengers can travel safely and efficiently every day. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let us know your experiences on the London Underground in the comments.